Welcome back to our community. Susie Thomas visiting with Elizabeth Ramsberg from United Way and Sarah Farron from Faith Family Church getting ready for Serve Day 16. That actually is a hashtag if you're participating. Serve Day, Serve Day 16 taking place on July 16th of 2016. So pretty easy to remember. And as we were leaving, Elizabeth, we left with a thought that there are so many other things taking place that United Way would be able to offer in ways of opportunities to volunteer and give back to our community. Tell us what some of those are. That's right, Susie. I mean, really, just around the corner, we have the Domestic Violence Project, Inc., hosting their night run on July 15th. They need volunteers that do help with parking, course management, and registration. Easy. You can just call Eric at the DVPI and tell him that you want to help. You won't be there all night long. He'll schedule you in for a couple of hours, and you will just have a ball. Another event is with the Maslin Museum. That very mm. night is the island party. Oh, yeah. They've had that for 22 years. They need help with children doing crafts, um, organizing, registration, food. Another great time to support our Maslin community. And really, I've just read about this one today. USA Football, mm-hmm. which is amateur football professional organization in our area they're coming to Walsh and this is a big deal wow yes it is early in July they need at least 25 volunteers every day to help put this competitive piece together and volunteers receive a meal and a t-shirt oh well there you go yeah so you'll need to look (laughs) at the United Way volunteer website or in the repository this week it'll uh, be some information about that that's particularly important because in the past they've gone to Fawcett Stadium and And with all the transition taking place now at the stadium becoming a bowl and so forth, Uh uh, it makes sense that they would need to use Walsh's field in place of that. So I'm sure volunteers are necessary because the whole scenario will be a little bit different. Um, All right. All these sound like fun. Let's go back to that that first one, July 15th, you were talking about with uh, DVPI. it sounds like some extra training might be responsible or it, necessary for some of the things you mentioned, like course management. Well, I think really the course man- management would be on the 5K. Oh, it's a 5K night run. That's much easier. So, yes. Now you if just you, point people to where to go. Right. You can do it and with style and smile, and it'll go well. <laughs> now, if you want to get deeper into the DVPI, and they do use volunteers as tutors and mentors to work at the mm-hmm. facility, you would require it does require training and commitment. Um, you would go through a background check, and that would be the same thing if you have a heart for working with people in hospice or at a hospital. Um, all these things do, you know, require training and uh, background checks. So it takes some thought. Uh, to get involved, but it's always worth it. What I love you're saying is that whatever your time availability is, there would be something for you to do. There are, as you say, the one-hit wonders, Mm -hmm. or there are the long-term commitment-type volunteer experiences. And I'm I'm looking at July 16th as that one day that's the launch pad for perhaps longer-term involvement once you find out the heart and mission of one of these organizations. And and you're nodding, so am I on the right track here? You are. And, And I also tell people, they may go to something and it's just not their thing. Right. The first thing to do, a rule of thumb, is to try it three times if it's an ongoing. And then if you find it's just not the right fit for you, don't give up on volunteering. Come, we'll talk, we'll find something else to do. And the other thing I want to say is volunteering doesn't always have to be such an organized event. You could take your children Go to the parks with some bags. Clean up as a family. Get out there. Leave leave your TV. Leave your computer. Come out and do some good together. It's a it's a wonderful thing. Also, just picking up litter in a downtown area. There are so there. When you look around, you won't see trash, but there are so many cigarette butts. You can make such a difference in a small way by just devoting an hour or two to bring your friends out. Go out by yourself or with somebody, and be safe. You're talking (laughs) top of the mind, just um, thinking in a different way. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily have to be organized or an official United Way, 501c3. It can be, here's somebody or something that needs help, Mm -hmm. a neighbor who needs a meal, and so forth. 
I had a friend who used to dress herself and her son up as a clown and go visit friends and, and go visit children in the hospital just as herself. She used to mm-hmm. just do this. She was a stay-at-home mom, and they would say, who are you with? And she was like, mm, nobody. I just really like to do this. And, and the difference that that made in the lives of those children at mm-hmm. the children's ward in the hospital, just amazing. Right. She knew her gifts. Mm-hmm. She knew she wanted to share those with her child, and she just used her imagination, made some phone calls talk to some people and they got it worked out that's it Uh uh-huh that's all there was to it little initiation (laughs) exactly but it's also generational she was modeling that for her son do you find and i'll throw this out to both of you do you find that having volunteerism and a heart for volunteerism to be a generational thing I think it can be, and I think that's a what you brought up is a really great point. Some of the opportunities that we um, have provided here for, for Serve Day are family appropriate. So we've asked organizations to let us know if kids could participate. Now, some, you know, they can't. It requires you, you got to be old enough to, to you know. I don't know, swing a hammer or something mm-hmm, like that. Sure. There might be some things that um, that kids can't help with. But there are some things, especially like we had mentioned, those hy- putting together those hygiene kits for those um, for our, our prison campuses. That's something we wanted to do intentionally that someone could bring their kids and family and model that um, and let their kids put their hands to something at a young age and learn, you know, it's not hard. And actually, this is fun. This is something that we just do. It's just something we do and let that be built into sort of the, the culture of their family that we serve together. We serve mm-hmm. our community and, um, and it's part of who we are. The opposite is also true, and I've known people who have grown up in families where volunteering is not part of that family's fabric, but these folks would like to be a different kind of parent. What would you say to that person? How do you get started when that's not something that you've done in the past? Well, I would say, first of all, pick out a pick out something that's convenient for you. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's in your neighborhood, look at what's around your neighborhood. Because if it's too much of a hassle, you're not going to do it. Talk to, think about also what turns you on. Do you think that helping people with food or do you love music or the theater or autistic children? You know, think about that. And then maybe make one call to an organization or to the United Way and we can help you with that. Also, taking a friend with you the first time is mm-hmm. is a good thing to do. But, you know, I, it's, it's clear that even that in the United States, in the world, no one volunteers and gives back more abundantly than all United States citizens. Wow. It is. Interesting. Yeah. It probably has to do with our heritage. It's that we embrace all people, all walks of life. We are helping people. And um, it is one of the most wonderful things about being an American person in this country. Mm -hmm. So fascinating to find out because there was a, um, a book written not long ago, Who Really Gives? And they have found out that it truly is the middle America, not necessarily the super wealthy, that are the most philanthropic. Mm-hmm. That um, it is people who are middle income, not that much time on their hands, but these are the ones who are giving of their time and giving of their resources. Let's talk about uh, the giving of your time. Volunteer organizations, as a rule, are losing volunteers, maybe because more families are needing two incomes. It just seems that there are fewer and fewer people who are able to give on a regular basis that time. Are you finding that? And are you adjusting, if so, if you're finding that to be true, are you adjusting how you do things as far as giving people more of these one-day opportunities, um, a day of serving, a day of caring, a serve day 16? Uh, How are you working with the fact that people just don't have much time these days? Well, it is a fact that they, they don't have enough time. And also, you know, we see people who are, um, have left the workforce, you know, and retirees are, have done their job. And it is time to bring in new people into mm-hmm. the volunteer world. Um, through social media and being more savvy, I think we are seeing that the, the younger folks do want to come in and, and help. Days of service like this do assist in that process, 
but also at the end of that is also to come into our agency. We, we want you here. And I think that agen agencies have done a lot of work to be more with it that way. But it's also true that our agencies and nonprofits run a Monday through Friday work week, business work week, typically, you know, nine to five or whatever. So it gets into the fact that there may not be that many opportunities in the evening, mm -hmm. weekends for folks. So it's a continual um, effort that I think everyone is making to bring in new folks. I'm going to just contradict myself right away. Sarah, you have said, you said earlier today that Faith Family Church, you've noticed, is so giving that you're having to turn people away now because you're getting too many people saying, yeah, we want to help on Serve Day. Touch on that a bit. Yeah, so um, in working with United Way and reaching out to the different agencies, the organizations that, that may have projects on that day, we've got those projects set and they've told us how many that they can host. And, and so we've got a certain number of volunteer opportunities for that particular day. And I'm telling you, Faith Family, they showed up in numbers. They signed up. They began as soon as we released those opportunities. It's really being driven through through our small groups. Many of them are serving together in their small groups. And I'm telling you, as they began to sign up, those spaces filled so quickly. So uh, my best advice in the future, if you didn't get in on this one, man, next time we roll this out, sign up quickly because um, those spaces are really going fast. And I know that the, it's it's part of our culture as a church to want to give and to want to serve and to be generous and to reach the community. So it's not a surprise to me that those, those spaces are filling so fast and people are wanting to be a part of what's happening in the community. And people might be wanting to know what's happening at Faith Family as well. Tell us a little bit about your website and social media where we can follow and find out everything um, that you're doing to be plugged in and to be the church out in the community. Sure, yeah. Um, you can find a lot on our website at um, myfaithfamily.com. You can uh, you know, watch back um, some of the, the worship experiences. You can, um, there's links to our social media there. There's different video, different media. You can find out a lot about, um, you know, connecting either serving within the church on one of our teams or even connecting and being part of one of our small groups we call connect groups. Um, our, our phone number is there. If you have any questions, our staff um, is always ready to, to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation and, and help you find uh, the best fit um, for you. But myfaithfamily.com is probably your first stop. Uh, to find out more about the church. What are you going to be doing on July 16th? On July 16th, I'm hoping that I'm going to get to um, visit several different sites and just see uh, see the people um, putting their hands to stuff, hearing some great stories. I know that um, I know that it's going to touch a lot of people's um, hearts as they're putting their hands to things, and I'm just looking forward to, to seeing that. Also, jumping on social media and, and sort of following the story that way as people post uh, what they're doing and, and you know what they're experiencing. So I'm really looking forward to it. It will be fascinating to see all these different churches that are working on that same day. That that's Saturday. And you said you're still having church Saturday night, still having church Sunday yeah, morning. We'll be there having church, so come out, and I'm sure we'll get to hear a great report of um, you know what, what all we got to accomplish in the, in the community. Awesome. And Elizabeth, final thoughts? What are you looking forward to having this done? Oh, well, it's a pleasure <laughs> to work with Sarah and her team. And also uh, what I look forward to is as we, at the United Way, as we start to roll into the campaign, we will be launching that. Uh, the Swaldos are our campaign chair this year. And I want you to remember that if you like the idea that the United Way is the leader and volunteer, we have online resources for you. If you ever need the 211 information and referral, if you know what our new bold goals are, uh, the VITA tax program, and everything else the United Way does, I hope you'll consider giving a small or large amount to the campaign this year. Awesome. Elizabeth Ransberg, Sarah Farron, thank you so much, both of you, for joining us in our community.